Hello, Sheri Hansen here. Uh, thank you for tuning in to my YouTubes that I'm uh, putting up on my YouTube channel. I do invite you to subscribe as I load new videos up. My goal is to be very open and honest and authentic about my own struggles, my own uh, failures, <laughs> my own successes, uh, in a hope of leading people into a place of understanding that uh, mindfulness practice has so many rewards and it cuts across all religious uh, precepts, all superstitions, everything you can possibly think of to keep you in a place of groundedness where you can witness your emotions but not be drugged down under the water and drowned by them. What we're going through right now is a massive worldwide uh, mindfulness lesson. And we don't like it. We hate it. We are in a place at the current time where we went through COVID and we wanted our, <laughs> our badge. You know, do I get do I get a reward for going through this and not going ballistic? I really want one. Where's where's my sticker? Where's my star on my on my worksheet? I want it. And instead of getting that, we're getting a broiling up of war. And I think it brings me back down to my practice as I go through this. I'll share with you. It has been five months of 24-hour uh, um, a day pain for me because my hip joint has failed and I'm not into surgery as yet. So my mindfulness practice is to always come to the pain, deal with the pain, not let it get into my emotional field to constantly be in submission, to be constantly letting go of this uh, ego trained mind, which says if I'm not in control, then I'm in danger. So I was thinking today about this really interesting thought that occurs to me frequently. Uh, we are so wired in our brains to believe that we need to be right. And I want to explain to you why that happens. It's a primitive thing. It's the limbic brain. If I am wrong, I'll eat the red berries and I'll poison myself and I'll die. If I am right, I will not do something which will kill me. So we tend to align our sense of safety, our sense of um, vitality, our sense of being in a place that's a good place with being right. Well, that doesn't work out too well in this world because what we're seeing is the only thing we can count on is some fresh form of hell. <laughs> what type of hell is this now, we ask. So we have these choices. I can be right, and that means I will hold on to my beliefs with a death-like grip. And if science comes along and disproves me, or if social uh, structures fall and change, then I will be in a place of terror. If I am wrong, I am going to fight like fury to not be wrong. And then I'm going to get into a place of what I call the embracing of chaos. So I am going to hold on to anything that I used to believe, even if it is destructive to my own life and to society. And we see this happening around us. And we're going like, why are they doing that? Well, they're doing that because that's the way the brain is wired. 
I have to be right. If I'm not right, if I feel uncomfortable, if I feel anxious, then I'm in a war and I'm going to prove I'm right. There is a third path, which I am constantly having to um, bring my mind back to. And it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's not easy. And that is, am I right? Am I wrong? Am I now? And what I mean by that is, if I drop the concept of being right or wrong and embrace the concept of being now, then I'm in a place where I can grow, where I can change my ideas, where I'm softer, where I'm more emotionally and mentally flexible. So just to give you an example, as I am dealing with this hip pain, um, I could come into a state of anger, push back, why can't I get into surgery? It's because of them, which is a really stupid place to go. Or I can be in a place where I'm clinging to the future and I go, oh, but I really want to be out there walking and this is preventing me from the future that I should have which is a really stupid place to go because all I'm doing is upping the anxiety and the sense of being a prisoner on purpose. And that's kind of crazy, I think. So if I get into now, I sit and I start deep breathing and I look around me and I go, wow, I've got this beautiful house. I've got this mindfulness practice. I am healthy except for my hip, um, and I just bring myself into my body. I can feel the ground under my feet. I can feel the structure of my body. I can feel the breath coming in and bringing me home, and I can be in a place where I don't need to know what happens next, because what happens next, get this, this is the beauty, is now. And if I'm really, really, really good at living in now, then I'm not in a state of constant fear about what will happen next because I have built my skills to dwell in the present and I make a home there. I make a home in my present place. So any other place I go is also going to be the present and is also going to be now. So I'm just sharing this with people who are in a state of struggle at the current time. Drop the necessity to be correct. Society is changing, the world is changing, the energies are changing, and some of the good things we're getting out of this, and I see this with great joy, is we're starting to understand what it means to be a refugee. We're starting to get to a place where we are seeing what war does to people. We are upping our empathy. We didn't do this during uh, the Syrian war. We didn't do this in Yemen. We haven't done it with Africa. But now because we're watching people like us who are white going through this, the, me the lesson is coming in. The lesson is coming in. Oh my God, we need to take care of those 5 million refugees. We need to take care of people who are starving and living in chaos. And that's what Inhabiting Now does for us, is we come to understand what the lesson is. There is always a lesson in the now. And instead of pushing back on it, instead of getting angry at it, what we do is we thank the teacher <laughs> for the worksheet. We put our heads down and we learn the lesson because that is the way that we bring compassion and social justice to the world. So I just wanted to share this with you because I see a lot of people who are seeking an answer for the amount of anxiety they have. All I can say is I am living in isolation. I have constant pain. 
and I am able to use my mindfulness practice to release the anxiety and settle in to the present. So good luck. <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. And if anyone wishes to have a coaching session with me, do get a hold of me. I am helping many people right now to find their footing and to stay in a place that is much calmer. Because um, if you're calm, you are ready to get in the boat if there's a tsunami. You're not standing there flapping around. Okay? Thank you.